as one of the leading industry experts in film finance, first, especially for the students out here, you know, and the people that might not be as familiar, what is the biggest part of financing? Like, where does that come from? Is it foreign? Is it equity? Is it debt? Um, and I know it, it's different for every picture, but you know, maybe a general trend that you're seeing. What's the biggest part? And then talk about the different parts of what actually goes into financing the average film that you work on. Okay. Well, as I said earlier, you've got um, you've got the debt. Debt is money that a bank will lend you um, quite cheaply. Uh, against pre-sales that have already been made. So there's a movie, costs $5 million, you've done uh, $2 million in pre-sales already, you can go to a bank and borrow, I mean, it's up, a million and a half dollars against those $2 million in pre-sales. And they won't charge you very much money for it because it's not really much risk with them. They know that there's contracts out there that exist that will uh, pay them back when the movie's delivered. So they're probably, they, and the movies are bonded, so they know the film's gonna get made, the movie's gonna get finished, the movie's gonna get delivered. And there's $2 million of pre-sales isn't made. A million and a half they're lending, it's a virtual, no risk. Then, you know, on your $5 million movie, I'm just, I'm just thinking through this process here. You go uh, and you figure out that you've got a million dollars of soft money now in a $5 million movie. So now you've got a loan for one and a half and you've got $1 million in, in soft money. You can sell that tax credit for some for cash. Um, and so now you've got two and a half million dollars of your $5 million budget. And now you're thinking, okay, how am I gonna come up with the other two and a half million dollars? Well, you could go to one equity investor and say, okay, Give you put in two and a half million dollars and you own the whole movie. There are very few guys, equity investors, that will put that much money into a five million dollar movie. So the way that we're doing it now and thinking about it a lot is that we take that two and a half million dollars and say, okay, we'll get one million dollars or one point two five million dollars from an equity investor. And then that middle piece, that other million that's missing, or the million two fifty that's missing, that's what they call gap or mezzanine financing. And there are companies out there that like that deal because, yeah, they're not making a, a huge back end, and yeah, they're not making a huge return on that money, but it's much less risky than the guy that's sitting in the last position with a million dollars. And uh, if the foreign sales estimates are three and a half million dollars, and two was sold, there's another million and a half dollars left that hasn't been sold. And is America still. So, okay, I'll put in a million two fifty because I'll gamble that the rest of the foreign is going to pay out, and I'll gamble that, that if it doesn't, there's still the U.S. deal. And then you have the equity investor who says, you know what, I'm going to gamble on the whole thing. I'll put in a million dollars, I'll own 50% of the movie, and, uh, and I'll gamble that each part of that is going to get paid back and that the movie's going to perform. Do you guys follow that? It's <laughs> good. For, in terms of uh, barrier to entry for people's first movies, a pure equity deal tends to be the easiest because you, uh, you know, a lot of the, the financing structures that Cassie was talking about, that there's, they're really dependent on relationships and on track records, which first filmmakers starting out may not have. Um, so the equity, the equity route tends to be a great first route. Uh, and that equity usually is, and Cassian alluded to this earlier, it's usually friends and family money first off. Um, you know, Napoleon uh, was 425000 and it was one single angel investor who had a special relationship to, to the filmmakers, uh, and that's, that's how we raised that money. And the, a lot of people's first films are, are uh, friend money, family money, friend of family money, or in some other way, a pure equity play where you're asking high net worth individuals to swallow the entire budget. Well, hold on. Um, so, Cassian talked about the different waterfalls and how when the revenue starts to come in from the picture, people get paid in different orders, with the equity investors sitting kind of at the back of the train, which is what makes it most risky. When you do an equity deal, and again, a deal is what you make it, you can do anything in the world, but traditionally, if you've got half a million dollars, then every dollar that comes in from selling the movie in any way you can goes to repay that money to the investor first. Once they're made whole, once they get all of their cash back, then it's a 50-50 split between the equity investors. Well, and, and sometimes they get a big on that money. Okay, they get 20%, 20% is the normal thing, so if you we put fight a to avoid that, but it is, it is really common to get an additional 20% above their investment. Then it's half to the filmmakers and half to the investor. But when an actor comes in and gets back in, when you have a great director of photography that negotiates back in, or your casting director, whoever gets back in, comes out of the filmmaker side and not the investor side. And I will say that while the Dow is breaking new heights, 
and people are still complaining about super high unemployment rates, it's an indicator that while our economy is not super strong, there's a lot of cash sitting on the sidelines. And the mergers and acquisitions markets are heating up, and at least we've noticed in the last couple of years, it's been easier to raise private equity to finance movies than it has for us in the last five to seven. Years. Yeah, I, I, would, I, would, I would echo that. And, I, and the interesting thing, too, is it's actually become harder uh, to get loans from banks against these pre-sales. And so there's a lot of private individuals um, and private companies out there that are looking to do these kind of debt deals. Uh, and the debt we're paying anywhere between 10 and 15 percent, and the meds is somewhere between Two bars. You know, 15 and 20, or 12 and a half to 17 and a half, and then the, the equity is 20 percent. That's the stick going rate at the moment for those different parts of the financing. And there are people who have different appetites for different parts of it, and they're out there, and you know, as you said, it's about relationships and about knowing those people and who you've done business with in the past and who you can ask for the debt from and who you can ask for the mess from and who you can ask for the equity. And they all interchange. They're all constantly looking for deals. And I, I want to go back. You have actually are able to make deals without a preferred rate of return? We've had a, a premium on... Is there a premium on Citizen? Uh, there is a premium on Citizen. Maybe two of nine films? Amazing. Do you want to explain what that means? Uh, we talked about it a second ago. They were talking about the 20%. Some kind, sometimes it's called the vig. Vig is short for vigorish, which is a Yiddish phrase for juice, mm -hmm. meaning uh, when you're gambling, <laughs> the amount that goes to the house, they get a bit of the juice. When you're talking to legitimate capitalists who made a lot of money in business, it's best not to use Yiddish, fr Yiddish phrases that come from gambling. Uh, we think the word premium sits better with them, meaning, oh, you get 20% premium on your cash, or additional amount of interest on top of your cash. Doc makes a good point when we do these kind of things that a lot of money that comes into film is dumb money. This does not mean that it's from dumb people. They're very intelligent and often first generation millionaires and sometimes billionaires, so they've worked very hard and been very smart about making their cash. But they don't understand the nuances of the film industry. As they become more sophisticated, they can understand the structures that Cassian's talking about. When you're looking for what is comparatively a small amount of their wealth, like we do frequently, they may not understand that that's a negotiating point to bring in a 20% VIG or premium, if you will. Uh, however, when you offer that up, it sounds like it's making the deal a little sweeter. The fact is, in legitimate business, 20% is a huge rate of return. They're out there looking for 5% per year. And you're offering not only 20% of what they've got in, but then half of the movie afterward. 